Hi everyone and welcome to All Hands on Deck. Today I have the privilege to interview Tazim Elkington. Welcome Tazim for a wonderful topic, difference about love and sex. Thank you Virginie, lovely to be here with you again. Thank you, thank you, always a pleasure. So Tazim, tell me, uh, what, how would you um, describe love and sex? Why they don't go hand to hand together? It's very interesting to know that. So let's start with sex. What is sex? When two people are, uh, see each other and they're attracted to each other, it's always from the physical point of view. So you see someone and you feel an attraction. And this attraction is based on uh, the fact that this person has a frequency that is similar to your frequency for one thing, for most likely. And secondly, based on something about that person that is part of your memory. So it could be that this person has the frequency of your father. It could be the frequency of an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend. It could be the frequency of uh, something that pulls you based on your memory box, okay? Okay. Um, it could also be depending on, uh, you know, different people's beliefs. I believe that we have many lives and uh, there's karma. And sometimes that memory could be from a past life where you've had interaction with this person as well. So this attraction has many reasons. It's not one reason. It could be for different reasons. And at that point, you're attracted physically to this person and there's something always for two people when they're attracted that they need to learn from each other. And it's not always good. It's not always bad. It's not always ugly. It just depends. It takes its course. So that is the physical attraction, which then leads ultimately to uh, uh, the sexual inter interaction. Now, what is love? Uh, yeah. Love actually doesn't have a description. Love is... Love, the word love has been abused in our world and misused because today's love, so-called love, is a currency of exchange. I love you. What are you going to do for me? What are you going to give me? How are you going to fulfill my needs? Which is totally wrong. I love, sorry? Which is totally wrong. This is not love. I love, yeah, I love you. So because I love you, I am going to do this for you. I'm going to do that for you. All the things I'm going to do for you are going to make me feel needed. So it's a very corrupted form of love that exists in our world today. This is the reason our world is in the state it is in because we've kind of corrupted love and it has become like money, a currency of exchange. Wow, very interesting, yeah. And uh, when is this, I mean, in, in a relationship, I would say that uh, sex starts at the beginning, it's very exciting, this, that, but how long does it last and how, how does it go then can move into love, the real love, I mean? So first of all, um, scientifically, th there's research being done that the honeymoon period when two people meet normally lasts six to 18 months. These days with the youngsters, actually, it doesn't even last three months and they change partners or two months and they change partners because it has become very, uh, relationships have become very flippant now. It's very, um, commitment is not part of it, especially for the young generation, okay? Yeah. However, if we look at the honeymoon period, it's six to 18 months. And um, during this period, people are so overtaken by the physical aspect of being in a relationship that they don't see red flags. They don't see anything wrong with the other person. They're turned on all, most of the time. And it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, 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 like they have a, a veil in front of their eyes 
and in their minds. They can't see anything that's wrong with the other person. And it's not about wrong, but anything that's, that they ought to notice. That's a, that's a better way of putting it. Yeah. So after the honeymoon period, uh, by which time mostly they've committed to a relationship or you know, a future relationship that's going to commit to marriage or whatever else it is, they have not addressed what kind of person they are. Each person hasn't really seen who the other person really is because they're both on their best behavior to impress each other, to, to, to really create this facade. It is a facade, okay? They but haven't like, discussed what- It's more like a fireworks that, that doesn't last. Let's say, yes. because it's, it's also nice. You have this, you know, honeymoon stage and all, but it doesn't last. It's a fireworks. Yes, it's, it's temporary, just like fireworks. Yeah. They go off, poof, and then it's over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, basically, they haven't, they are not honest. Human beings are not honest on the onset. So then after, after they get comfortable, between six and 18 months, they start to get comfortable. Their true nature starts to show up. And when their true nature starts to show up, they start to realize, oh, I don't like that. Oh, I don't agree with that. Oh, stop doing that. And they also start taking each other for granted. So they start going back to their older habits when they were single. And uh, all these things start to bring a lot of uh, chaos. Yeah. And um, what they haven't addressed is uh, the fact that every single human being on the planet has baggage. And they have not addressed their personal baggage. So each one has their own baggage. And then they start to create a mutual baggage. And then the arguments start, then the disconnections start. And, um, and then before you know it, the relationship isn't working anymore. And they, because they haven't laid the foundational rules for their relationship, they don't know how to deal with it. So I get a lot of couples coming to me and saying, we've been married 20 years, 25 years, 10 years, whatever it is. And, um, I'm not happy. One party comes to me and says, I'm not happy. The other party says, I don't know what's going on because I'm very happy. So they're completely disconnected. It's not about happiness. It's about the fact that they are discontented and comfortable in their discontent. Yeah. But Ktazin, tell me, because many people, uh, I think nowadays the, the relationship doesn't last like it used to last, you know, like as you said, there is divorce at, after 10, 20, 30, 25 years. So would you have something to tell uh, today on the platform for people to know how to work on their relationship? Because at the end, we want the relationship to work. So mostly people have tried what they know, which is their own you know, whatever their own knowledge is, or they try to talk to friends and try to get advice, which never works, okay? If you want your relationship to work, you have to go for therapy. There's no other way. But I um, you here, Tazim, because uh, I was talking with my uh, daughter who does a study in medicine, and she told me something about psychology that when a couple goes to a therapist, uh, already it's too late. Because I think it's important, as you said, that uh, each member of the couple has to go prior to life uh, relationship to clear things because sooner or later it comes up. So I was very intrigued uh, about that. Can you, can you uh, let me know about that a little bit more? So firstly, before anybody commits to a long-term relationship, my suggestion is they both go for therapy separately. Okay. And then after they've done the separate therapy, they come together as a couple. I've done this for a couple of couples and it's worked fantastic where each one comes to me, we clear each one's baggage, then we bring them together. We lay the foundational values and the foundational, I don't like to say rules because I don't like the word, uh, the foundational um, values, um, agreements. Agreements, yeah and commitments that they have to make to make the relationship work. And these agreements are really important because they can go back to them anytime one of them breaks the agreement. 
Yeah. But so you, mm -hmm. prior, if they, if the younger generation can do this, because 30 years ago, we didn't have counseling and therapy as a mainstream. Now it's becoming mainstream. And as it becomes mainstream, young people are beginning to realize that they, they also have, uh, they also have uh, issues on commitment because they, a lot of them come from broken homes or marriages that didn't work. I don't like the word again, broken homes, but from separated relationships. Yeah. So if they come from that, they already have a break in trust. Yeah. So if they don't deal with that, they're not going to be able to create healthy relationships. And Tazim, um, some people, you know, they, they get divorced, they have a second marriage, again, it falls. And I, I know what I'm talking about um, uh, by, by my experience. Um, is there a, a chance for people, even when they are 80 years old, to change? Because, I mean, the pattern always comes if you don't fix yourself, right? So they can change. We can change. There is a hope for everyone to settle their love life, no? So I think we have to, first of all, there's two parts to this. The first thing I'm going to say is that we have put so much importance on being married that we forgot not everybody was born to be married. Mm -hmm. Or not everybody was born to be in a relationship. And not everybody was born to be in a relationship for all of their life with one person. Neither was anybody born, not, not everybody is born to have to be in a relationship all through their life, even with different people. So mm -hmm. first of all, let's define that. Yeah. Because there are people who really came to be on their own. Look at the monks, look at the nuns. Okay, but it's not just that group. Even normal human beings, regular human beings, normal, I don't think there's any normal, regular human beings, not everybody was born to be in a relationship or in a marriage, okay? Secondly, if we talk about um, can people change, there is not a single human being on this planet that cannot change. I love that. What? Yes, not a single human being. I can tell you this from the experience I've had okay. that the hardest, toughest people that I've seen and I, oh my goodness, I have seen some real hard walls in my therapy room, okay? And, um, and I have seen them change in front of my eyes because they have made the decision to change. They have made the decision to change their patterns to change those ways that have been repeated, in fact, for generations in their lives. So if, you, if, you, if I've gone back to their stories, their grandfather behaved in that way, the, grandmother, the, the father behaved in that way, he's behaving the same way and he's decided he's going to break that. Same with women, great-grandmother, grandmother, mother, and now they've decided, this, this person today in the present time has decided it's enough oh, now. I want to, yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Tazim. I could go on and on, but we have other topics coming on the, on the, on the platform. Thank you so much. I loved it. And to all of you listeners, please stay tuned for more to come to have a more balanced life and to find more who you are deep inside. Stay tuned, stay safe, thank you so much.